received in that winning European match in Iceland on Wednesday. So Crystal Palace, bottom of the table, know well enough what they face today. Steve Kemba leads the side with Alan Birchnell and Bobby Tamling restored to it. Jerry Queen as well. But they've not had a win since the opening day of the season. And the odds are that they will come and defend. Referee today, David Smith of Gloucester. So Crystal Palace get us away in this game at White Hart Lane, defending the goal to our right. Palace in yellow shirts with uh, blue shorts. Spurs in their customary white with black shorts. And I suppose if you're watching on black and white receivers, there is a similarity. Let me just point out for you that Crystal Palace are the team wearing the with the black ring to their shirts around the neck and arms, and also the black ring at the top of their stockings. Now here's Alan Birchnell back in the side after three games, but a poor pass, and it's Martin Chivers for Spurs. Kinnear. Chivers. Kinnear again. And Coates. Wall watching him very closely and goes in a certain amount of inconclusive play there in the Crystal Palace defence. But now Kinnear. Gills in. And Mel Clive, in fact, who uh, shot into his own goal in this corresponding match last season. I'm sure he must have had that on his mind at that particular moment, but he got out of trouble well. time by Blythe on Chivers but the referee in fact is well the ball is in the net but the whistle had gone really smacked it past Jackson but uh, long after the whistle had gone for this free kick and that's how it is from behind Jackson's goal almost a central position some 25 yards out played by Peters there for Knowles to bang one and well wide Two skippers, Steve Kember and Alan Mullery. Here's Stevie Kember, who was in fact married earlier this month. <laughs> David Payne. Peters, harassed by Payne, but very neatly found Gilzine. Gilzine bundled unfairly off the ball by Hoadley. And the referee not happy with a little piece of gamesmanship there by Hoadley. And the book, is it coming out? It looks as though the book is out. And Hoadley's name goes into the book. So a free kick now to Spurs. Gilzine taking a bit of a buffeting there. Peters! Oh, my goodness! Just over that Crystal Palace crossbar with a really tremendous shot by Peters. But it's Spurs throw and the first long throw of the match we've got from Martin Chivers. Gilzine at the near post as ever. And nodding it on. Peters now jockeying for a position there. And Murray to blast it for goal wide. <laughs> Jenkins. Linesman again flagging on this side, but of course the final decision is always with the referee. And if the linesman sees anything, he's got a flag. And now Perriman. Peters, oh, it goes in, down he goes, and that surely has got to be a penalty, and it is a penalty. That was a very good piece of refereeing, in fact, Mr. Smith delaying that decision until he saw whether the ball finished up in the net, because he felt that it was a penalty to, a penalty offence when Gilzine was brought down, and then when it went wide, gave the penalty. But now it becomes a battle between Martin Peters placing that ball and John Jackson in the Crystal Palace goal. Here he comes. And there it is. Absolutely no mistake about it. The perfect penalty from Martin Peters. And it puts Spurs into the lead. Beautifully placed there. Side footed by Martin Peters. England, still not out of trouble, though the linesman is flagging furiously. Virginal there, and my goodness, that was a bad back pass there that almost let Virginal in for Crystal Palace. Well, Mike England would have been a bit sore about that one. McCormick to Virginal, nicely inside for McCormick. Perriman to cut it out, Coates. 
Oh! And Blythe and uh, McCormick knocking each other's out, and Chivers to tuck it away for the second one. Well, that really was a chapter of accidents in that Crystal Palace defence, with Blythe and McCormick knocking each other out, and the ball running loose for Martin Chivers. England's gone up for it. What a massive throw that is without any real effort at all. And Blythe put it away for Perryman. Gills in. Perryman! Oh, and my goodness, that cannoned off Mel Blythe. When it looked very much as though that was on the way for number three. Oh! Goodness, Kemba caught that right in the face from Knowles. And they were both going for it with their feet. And honestly, that must have been six or one half dozen of the other, but Mr. Smith has got his book out. Coates, the worker. <laughs> the the skipper, and now Kinnear. Turning again, Gilzean just getting a foot to it. Chivers to knock it down for Perryman. Gilzean. Flick through there, and will it go? No, it won't. Perryman again, playing with Crystal Palace, and Mary to really hammer that one. They toyed with Crystal Palace once, twice and again. And then out it came to Mallory. A fine goal for Tottenham and their third. And when Mallory hits them, they really stay hit. And nobody could testify to that more than John Jackson. And there's the final whistle. And on the evidence of the second half, uh, comfortable and a well-deserved win by Spurs. Martin Peters, who got him on the way with that penalty. Martin Chivers, who added the second one. And Alan Mullery, who added a really extravagant th third one after they'd really toyed with the Crystal Palace defence. So then a comfortable victory in the end for Spurs and a final scoreline that reads Spurs 3, Crystal Palace 0. No.